In the previous video, we saw how Enzo's textures and body morph were created and customized by Thomas Sackman. And in this video, I am going to walk you through how we brought those into Unreal and assigned them to Enzo. And a special thank you goes to MetaHuman animator Sergei Vereshagin for walking me through the process of importing the body morph into Unreal and assigning it to Enzo. To bring the body morph into Unreal, I'm going to take the FBX Thomas exported from Maya and drop it into my project. In the import settings, I'm going to assign this to the MetaHuman base skeleton. And I want to make sure I check on import morph targets and then import it. I'm going to open up the morph and using this slider, we can see that the morph is working correctly. I want to assign the default body material and I'm only using LOD0, but if you want, you can modify the LOD settings here. I'm going to assign the MetaHuman body control rig in the default animating rig option. And I'm also going to assign the male tall normal body weight animation blueprint. You can assign the physics asset here, but I'm going to leave that at default and now I'm going to save all. Inside of the MetaHuman blueprint, I'm going to select the body component and assign the body morph to the skeletal mesh. And now I'm going to go to the event graph and over here, I'm going to right click and type in set morph target body. For the morph target name, I'm going to go back to the morph, right click over here and copy names. I'm going to paste it in here and then I'm going to change the value to one. And now I'm going to create a custom event and label this enable body and plug these two nodes in here. I'm going to compile and I'm also going to go into the construction script and I'm going to add the custom event node here by searching for enable body. And then I can compile and save. And a quick note, if your MetaHuman event graph looks different from mine, the set morph target node will go here. And in the construction script, the custom event node will go to the end of this. Once I hit compile and save, we can see the morph target is working on Enzo. Something you may encounter when adding a body morph is that there might be a visible seam between the body and face component. And this is due to the way Unreal handles vertex tangents. And a great explanation for this is in this video by Solutions Architect Tony Bowron at Epic Games, where he covers how to fix seam issues that occur when re-importing MetaHumans back into Unreal from Maya. He explains that in Unreal, when you import this, the GPU skinning will separate patches of vertices internally, so when you export these back into Unreal, they will not be lined up. The way I worked around this was to modify the material parameters of the chest area for the face and body. I'm going to use this version of Enzo that does not have a body morph assigned so that we can see what these material parameters are doing. I'm going to access the material instance for the body by selecting the body and opening this up. And I'm going to do the same for the face. I'm going to double click on this in order to access it. In the face material instance, I'm going to search for chest. And now I'm going to search for chest in the body as well. I'm going to add some random values in order to show you what the chest micro normal intensity does, what the chest micro normal tiling does, what the chest maximum roughness does, and what the chest minimum roughness does. For the face, we can see what the chest normal intensity does, the chest micro normal intensity, the chest cavity map power, the chest minimum roughness, and the chest maximum roughness. Some other parameters for the face that I found useful were the micro normal intensity and the normal intensity. The minimum roughness, the maximum roughness, the cavity map power, and the specular. And in the eye material instance, it was helpful to have control over the iris saturation the iris UV radius, the limbus darkness, and also the sclera brightness, the sclera power, the veins power, and the veins rotate. For the teeth, I modified the values of the gum color, the teeth color, the gum roughness, the normal strength, the teeth brightness, the roughness, and the sharp normal strength. 
in the shots where Enzo's teeth or tongue were visible. Now that I've covered these useful parameters, I'm going to assign Enzo's face and body textures. For the face, I've imported the base color, the roughness, the height map, and the normal. And for the body, I've also imported the base color, the roughness, the normal, the height, and for the body mask, I have two additional textures, this one Thomas created, and this other one I got from Rudy, also known as Real-Time Graphics. And depending on the shot, I would go back and forth between the two body masks. For the face textures, I assigned the base color over here, the normal over here, the roughness here, and the height map here. For the body textures, I assigned the base color here and here, the body mask here, the normal here, the roughness here, and the height here. With the body morph and textures assigned, I spent some time modifying the body and face material parameters. And depending on what part of the body the camera was focusing on, to bring out certain features, such as the fingernails in this shot, I modified the nail roughness parameter in order to bring out small details, such as this little shadow under the pinky nail. And I also found this parameter helpful for the foot shot in order to modify the roughness of the skin and the toenails. For the leg veins Thomas baked into the normal map, I modified the normal intensity in order to accentuate these details. And this is how I got the body morph and textures working on Enzo. In the next two videos, I will be sharing how the Vitruvian structure was built and rigged by 3D artist Pixel Urge and then animated using the default FK control rig, and how the Vitruvian Man statue was created by using motion capture data to create a reference of the metahuman body, which was then sculpted from scratch and textured by Thomas, while maintaining Leonardo da Vinci's original Vitruvian Man dimensions.